Hi, Helen. Could you just um, introduce yourself and um, tell us a bit about maybe your employment history and how you became involved with that? Um, I became involved with that. I'll take that bit first. Um, through versus arthritis, um, they occasionally get um, sent emails for various different things, not just arthritis. And because I have a sensory impairment, I get sent some of these emails, and that's how I became involved. With regard to my work history, I am a qualified medical secretary who um, is now retired. And I worked for 38 years in the National Health Service. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your disability? Right. I have um, albinism, which is um, the reason I have very fair hair. And also that involves the sight being um, damaged before birth. And therefore, there is always a problem with sight from the very beginning. So I am partially sighted and I have very bad nystagmus and that I've had all my life. And that is really the disability that I have. And it has got, because of age-related stuff, it has got worse over the past few years. Hey, thank you. Um, how's it... How does or did your disability affect you in the workplace? I have to, to go back a long time. I am actually now retired, so I'm now out of the workplace. But when I was working, I go back, a way back to the 70s was when I started. And at that time, I really couldn't openly say that I had a disability or be registered in any way because I would not have got a job. So I actually said to them, I had a sight issue um, and I was taken on and I worked there for all my working life within the health service. I actually left at one point and <clears throat> to go abroad for a short while. And six months after I came back, I was phoned and offered my job back because they wouldn't let me keep it open at the time. So I couldn't have been too bad because I actually was called back again. Yeah, of course not. Um, what was your role within the NHS? I was um, a few different things. I started off as a medical secretary and then I moved up and I was in charge of all the medical secretaries for the um, psychiatric service in Dundee. Um, as time went on, we went into community work and I was the first administrator to go out into the community as a patient administrator. And then at the end, I um, was a clinical support administrator and we were doing the paperwork and all this stuff for the Mental Health Act for the whole of side by the time I had left. So I've had a very varied role. Yeah, sounds like it, but it sounds like an interesting role. Um, so can you give me some examples of how your disability impacted positively and or negatively in getting a job or retaining employment? Um, getting a job, I, I know for a fact I would not have got a job um, in the general health service because they wanted people who could do shorthand etc and that was a negative I couldn't do shorthand because I couldn't um, distinguish between light and dark and the the paperwork and um, so therefore my uh, my roads were limited to begin with but once I was established I was just um, treated like an ordinary member of staff I did have to wear low visual aids to read stuff and I probably made more mistakes than a lot of people. Um, but once we got into computers, the positive of it was I could zoom my screen and that allowed me to work. I had no other stuff. That was all I had that um, allowed me to do a normal job. 
and I just um, filled in. I just fitted in. I'll give you an example. By the time I had left, we had another person with albinism in the building. And three of the nurses were actually having a cigarette in the smoking room. And they actually had said, it's very strange with two albinos in the building, blah, blah, blah. And one of the nurses actually said, and who's the other one? And it was me. They had it never, I was, off. yeah. So that, there's a positive. I was accepted as yeah. a normal member of staff. Yeah. Um, um, what Sorry, was, I'm did, trying did to you? take this out of the way. That's better. Yeah. Did you feel like um, you were like a disabled person in a non-disabled world or at any point? Or, or, or like you said, you felt included all, all the way through, but um, was there any point where you didn't? Feel like included or any any sort of thing you particularly had to address. Anything? I I didn't feel a disabled person in a, a normal world because that was not how I was brought up. Yeah, I was brought up to be a very independent person and to work in a normal world. So that is different from how it would have been nowadays yeah. because I didn't register myself disabled until I was in my mid-50s. Yeah. It, and it does, it's a different slant on how people nowadays look at it. And then when I started work, it wasn't a case of that they had to take so many disabled people or things like that. Yeah. It was just you had to fit in is basically how it was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite true actually. So like you said, we now have like all different like and I still to try and support people into employment who have disabilities so you have like access to work and various things like that. Do you know all about that and if if you had that at the time when you were at work, do you do you feel it would have maybe had a more of a positive effect, impact for you? I, I suppose it would have. It, it would have helped to... Um, I'm not saying there was discrimination. It maybe would have helped to... Um, for employers to know that because it may educate, have educated them yeah. I had to do the education of employers, yeah. not yeah. have any help in educating them. Yeah, yeah, and that probably, employers probably learned more from you than what they realised they were learning because it wasn't put across as training. You were just being in the workplace doing your job. So that, I, mm -hmm. that would have been a different approach to what it is now. And because we're often focused on disability awareness training, whereas they were getting it and they didn't even realise they were getting it. Um, from what you've said, um, um, I think what, they have to go. They have to try and go with the positives and what a person can bring to them, and look over the bits that they think they can't bring to them. Yeah. What about um? How do you feel about if employers? Consulted with you more as the disabled person, or do you feel that by doing that, it's kind of singling a disabled employee out? No, I th I think that um, I could get a lot of help and information, and also I hope I could give a lot of positivity that. Having someone with a disability doesn't mean you have to change the whole workplace. Of course it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've had heard a lot about the supported employment programmes that, that are available now for um, trying to assist disabled people into employment, but if you have heard anything about them, what do you think they can... They can could do better. Now, is this where somebody can have someone to help them? Yeah, or or sometimes 
you find that maybe people with disabilities are maybe to the job centre put on like a 12 week programme with the view of helping them into employment um, but a lot of people say that you know like 12 weeks isn't long enough or or you know after the 12 weeks they've got no support so so what is the point in the programme and things like that um, obviously you might not have had the experience of these kind of programmes but if anything you've heard about them gives you a view of it or um, it's really something I don't know an awful lot about because I haven't yeah. been involved in it. I can see the point of it, but I can also see the point of them saying that they want more support after it, yeah. even if it's just a contact that they have. Yeah, that's a, that's a common response from people because you don't feel it's long enough and then after lunch they're kind of left in limbo of where to go now. So it's, um, that's definitely something that's came out through talking to people as well and through the conference with SUS and various things like that. Um, how um, did being a disabled person in employment impact on your wellbeing? Oh, no, that's an interesting one. Um, it did have an impact because... Um, I unfortunately took a couple of viruses and I ended up with post-viral fatigue at one point. But um, that was more a problem. The fatigue was more a problem sometimes than my sight was. And I had a harder job getting an employer to understand that one than I did with my sight. Yeah. And I, yet that wasn't regarded when I had it. I would say now that people with long COVID are going through what I went through years ago. Yeah. But when I, a consultant, a medical consultant, suggested I went back to work part-time, um, my employers wouldn't do it. The attitude at that time was you were either fit to work or not. Yeah. So, so there was no phased getting into work. Yeah. If you had a problem. So, so did you have then to wait until you were on full health to be able to No, I went back to I went back to work, and that was the biggest mistake I made. So it didn't have a. It certainly wasn't positive. Did it make your health and well-being worse? Come back to work before you were ready. What happened was it, it was after the initial viruses. I went back to work, and um, I ended up going back quicker than I probably should have. And the following November, I was off for two months. Yeah, so it had a prolonged It effect. had an effect. It wasn't really my sight that had the effect. It was yeah. the fact that I picked up this viral thing. And I can see employers are going to have a lot of problems with long COVID for yeah. exactly the same reason. Yeah. What about before you had the virus? And being a person, a disabled person in employment, did you feel that have been in employment, uh, like, made you feel like you had a purpose and, and like, did you feel included and in part of the workplace and, like, even the wider element, did you have the social aspect of being an employed person and being able to interact with people outside the work and things like that? Or... Was that not really something you considered? No, um, I would say it was very inclusive. We were not a huge bunch of staff in the first place and we were all roughly the same age. So we did socialise and things. I, when I was younger, joined Young Farmers and that was more my, my social life. But I was always included and I've held office bearers things and all that sort of stuff. So... That was never a problem, either at work or outside work. And yeah. if we were going any place, um, I was always included. And in fact, the other day I was out for lunch with some of my ex-colleagues. That, that's good that the relationships have been maintained, even with you being retired and things. Yeah, and we, we, we were, we're all retired. And can I say it was 
that they were all kind of more management. Um, I was the set, I mean, one was a consultant, another one was a nurse manager. You know, it was the upper level I was yeah. out with. I also have friends that, that are the same as what I was. Yeah, so it sounds like you've had both positive and negative experiences of um, how employment impacted on your well-being. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Um, next question is, what do you think were the key things you learned as part of your employment journey? So if you learned anything in particular about yourself or just about being a disabled person in employment, is there anything in particular when you reflect back now? I think what I learned about myself was that I was as good an employee as anybody else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, um, I, I, my personality and stuff like that and the way I worked, I got promotions. So I obviously could do what I was supposed to do. The only problem was it used to take me a bit longer. Yeah. Slightly longer. I'm not saying miles longer. I'm only saying I was a bit slower because it's slower to read. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing I did learn about myself was um, I, I was successful in the workplace. Yeah. But I had to work for it. Yeah. So I think it sounds as if you were determined as well, would you say? Um, I would say that is a bit of my nature, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your determination was a big part of where, where you got to, I think. Yeah. Um, um, which is really great, great to hear. It's great to hear that you had on the whole a positive experience, but it's important to highlight the things that weren't so positive as well for employers. Um, my last question is... What tips would you give to employers as a disabled employee with regards to employing and retaining a diverse workforce? I think what they have to do is, um, how can I put it in a way, is sort of look past the disability and look at the person. Um, and see what they can bring to you and not what obstacles you think they're going to cause. 